Hello, everyone. Welcome to this section today. We're going to be talking about design to runtime using Event Portal and uh, Solace's SEMP APIs. So, quick introduction. My name is Tom Fairbairn. I'm one of Solace's distinguished engineers. My job is to help customers such as yourselves understand how to apply Solace technology to uh, meet your business design, business objectives. With me today is my colleague Magali. Hello, bonjour, my name is Magali. I work at Solist in France and I am managing our pre-sales activity on the French market. So this demo today is to show you how we could help you accelerate designing your event streaming flows. And on this demo, we are going to use two Solus products. So one obviously is the Solus Event Broker. And the second one is our governance solution, which is a Solus Event Portal. So thanks, Megli. Yeah, let's just introduce the PubSub Plus event portal um, for people that haven't seen it. So the idea behind it really is that it, you can build an event mesh and share events around your event mesh. And that's the kind of runtime aspect of things. But how do we design those events? How do we come up with them? How do we build event-driven architectures? How do we reason about them and communi communicate with our colleagues? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a central place to build up a catalog of the events we already have. Maybe we'd even like to probe into our runtime to find what events are already traveling across our event-driven architecture. We want to discover the events we have. How do we secure these events? How do we manage them? Talk about governance, do event lifecycle management, all those kind of things. Well, it turns out there's kind of quite a good model for doing that already. If you are familiar with the API um, gateway part of the industry, they have these ideas of an API gateway runtime and overlaid on top of that an API um, portal where you can share API interfaces where you can govern them. And that's the model we've adopted with the event portal. The idea here is to have a portal layer on top of your event broker runtime that enables you to do this governance and design. So you can see in this slide here, here's the screen that shows you how we can design events. We can build application domains, which are containers for these event-driven applications. We can uh, build up the applications themselves, version what the application does from an event point of view, add descriptions, add users. Then we can Start building up the events themselves here. You can see the arrows between the events showing how events flow between the applications. And we can reason about them in the same way as the applications. We can put descriptions in, we can version them. And that gives us the ability to start building up a catalog of these events. So if we look at this from um, this kind of view here, we have the runtime view which enables what we can do is probe into our broker runtime to discover the events that are already there. We can build up metrics. So what is our most common event? What's got the most data? What is the most commonly used? What's the most complicated event channel? Then when we're designing them, we can start bringing out the applications. We can look at what an application consumes what it publishes. We can tie that into the discovery we've done on our runtime. That enables us to build up our catalog. You can see up here, we're listing out individual events. So let's imagine we want to find, we're building an application and we think there may be an event that's already on our infrastructure that we can use for that application. We can go into the catalog and, and look them up. And then again, once we're discovering from the runtime, we can use that to build up a catalog of our existing events. We can bring them into our applications. We can even look into different eventing platforms. So for instance, if we have a, a, a Kafka deployment, we can look into our Kafka cluster and bring the events out of that. And so that's kind of the idea behind Event Portal, this, this single place to reason, communicate about our applications and the event flows between them. And we can look at different platforms here. So we've got Kafka, we've got Confluent, we've got the Solace platform too, and MSK, of course, which is built on top of Kafka. So um, kind of how this is anticipated to be used in terms of how users interact with it. 
is that um, for architects, what they're going to be doing is drawing up their application domains and the interactions between events. They're going to be using designer to create and review their applications, the events. Maybe they even want to start talking about the payload schemas of the events themselves, which are all captured in the event portal. They're going to map these schemas to events and these events to, to apps, and they're going to, be, going to be able to govern as an event consumption across different boundaries. We have these app, application domains. They can act as boundaries, if you like, between lines of business or maybe even event, uh, maybe even agile um, squads, so that we can kind of form this contract idea around how we're sharing events. Then developers are going to take that and they can start developing the applications. They can see the event as a kind of contract around their application so they can build it. We can even do that automatically by exporting async API specifications. That's an open specification that enables you to specify the event. You can even generate code from that async API spec um, so that you can concentrate, so that you can consume the and publish the event automatically and concentrate on the, the business logic around it. And then our, from our data science point of view, let's imagine we're, we're building out some data lake applications. We can understand where the events are generated, what consumes them, what the schema is. We can use the catalog to probe into our event driven architecture to understand what data is available to us so that we can start building our analytics platforms um, to uh, uh, understand some of the higher level business insights that our event um, conversations can reveal to us. So. One of the key points of Event Portal, and we're going to bring this out today, that's what this demo is really kind of emphasizing, is that we have an API into the Event Portal so that we can use existing and new school, new tools, CICD pipelines, for instance, to probe into what we've designed and do some automatic lovely magic with it. And part of this demo today is going to illustrate how that can be done. And of course, what we can also do is expose elements of event portal out to customers and partners. Now, if we explore our async API spec, that enables our customers and partners to consume our events. It gives them a common format to understand what those events look like. Magali, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Tom, for this uh, intro. Um, so let's get into uh, more into the demo itself. So as, as Tom illustrated, uh, you can now guess that you could use the event portal in different ways, depending on where you are in your event flow journey. So if you are already using Starless or Kafka, you could say, well, I'd like to have a representation, a visual representation of what I have designed already or implemented in my brokers. So this is what, what we can do today, discover uh, the events which are processed by Solus or Kafka. Then uh, this discovery process will come up with the file and this file will be imported into the designer and the catalog that Tom presented. So you could have a visual view of your events, schemas, and application consuming or producing events. So this is one way to get started. The second way could be from a blog page. Well, you have just chosen to uh, move to event-driven architecture. Good for you. There are a lot of advantages for that. And now you want to start you know, implementing your event-driven flows. So you could use the designer and the catalog to draw, literally draw your flows. And then from that, we will show you how you could commit to the runtime you have chosen. So commit this design as an implementation to the Solus or Kafka runtime. And in today's demo, we are going to show you how you can do this uh, to Solus, obviously. So, if we look at a, a different view of what we are going to show you, we can uh, see the design time at the top is where we, we will start from the designer. And then you will be able to select uh, the events you want to 
publish to or you know uh, implement to your broker and we will commit to that to the Solus broker. So I'm going to now um, show you what we have prepared for this demo and I will share you, uh, I will move to the event portal designer now. So let me share. Okay, so um, I'm going to use uh, this uh, application domain, which is the one we have prepared for this demo. So as, as Tom mentioned before, these application domain are, are kind of a workshop where you can, you know, uh, implement one or several projects, but maybe to uh, have boundaries between line of business or projects. So let's have a look at, at this uh, domain. It's a supply chain domain, but a very simple one where we have a warehouse management system on the left and two stores, two point of sales here. And the idea is that let's imagine that the point of sales is running out of milk or water. It needs to order more to this warehouse management system. So an event will be generated from the point of sales to the warehouse management system for ordering milk or water, right? So this is one of the order, like the creation and maybe the update if something has been forgotten. And once the uh, order has been shipped, well, the warehouse management system is going to, in, in, in return, emit events uh, for the shipment. And finally, there could be a, an, an invoice will be, which will be sent to the store. So let's have a look at the events view. Uh, and this is what we have uh, modeled here. Uh, and, and you can have a look at, at the topic structure, which is something very important to us for subscribing possibilities, for instance, and we will use that in the demo. So, Tom, your turn now. So let me just flip back. I just want to explain briefly how the um, demo is structured here. So, uh, a key point is that this is a demo just to kind of show an acceleration of how this can be done. And, and really what we're showing today is how you can make use of these APIs, the SEMP API and the Event Portal API. Rest assured, while this is a demo now, we're working busily on actually implementing this completely in Event Portal. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got this idea of an Event Portal API that we can go and query the design that Magali so carefully uh, drawn up there. And that gives us lots of flexibility. We talked earlier about the CICD pipeline. Now this demo shows how we can build interactive applications that allow us to interact with our design and possibly even move that into the runtime. Now I'm not going to talk in detail about these APIs, the SEMP or the Event Portal API. Um, there's actually a separate presentation in this uh, user event. I'm going to be presenting with Tamimi on how we can actually use um, the Event Portal API. Today this is more about showing what's possible with it. OK, so let's see what we can actually do. I'm going to flip to my screen now so you can see everything I'm doing. So let's uh, flip from that to my actual demo itself. So what I've got running here is um, a web page that I've written that makes use of these um, makes use of these APIs. So as mentioned earlier, what we're going to do is query the um, event portal so we can get all of the individual application domains there. Now, this being a good pre can demo, I'm actually going to use um, Magali's example there. So let's get that particular application domain and we want to actually use that one. So now let's have a look at the applications that are actually in that application domain. So I don't know if you remember from that diagram, we had the, the, the POS systems on the right hand side and the warehouse management systems on the left. You can see here that I'm using the event portal APIs to query the event portal to see what applications are available inside that domain. OK, this looks good. So let's pick them. Uh, so I've got these selected applications. Now, what events are available? inside these applications. Well, here are the events, right? So I can pick which events I want. There we go. So I've selected all the events I've needed. Again, we're querying the event portal using that REST API to pull out the events that are associated with a given application. In this case, we're looking at the events the application is consuming. 
Okay, so now what I want to do, I've queried the information I want. I want to uh, uh, create uh, uh, some broker infrastructure that's going to provide queues that listens to these events. So now I want to move to the idea of deploying this out to the broker itself. So here's my list of selected events, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create some queues, and I can pick queue names here if I want, and it's going to subscribe to these events. Now, what's nice about doing this from querying the um, event portal API, and it begins to show some of the power of this idea of an event portal, is that normally what we would do here is subscribe to topics. And I've got to kind of, oh, OK, I've got an event, and I've got a topic, and there's a mapping between the two. Well, by using these APIs, I can abstract all of that away. I can just subscribe to the good shipment event without worrying about the underlying topic structure, because that's what I've captured in Event Portal. Great, so then I go to the deploy stage, and all I have to do is click provision, and away I go. So if I now look at my broker itself, so I happen to be running the broker locally on um, Docker on my laptop. I'll go to PubSub Plus Manager and just log in. And because I'm a very lazy demo developer, what I've done is actually just use my, my default VPN. So we'll just wait for that to load. So go into my VPN. Now, what I'm doing is here is I'm assuming that my applications are uh, wanting persistent events, so I'm creating queues for them. So I'll go and have a look in PubSub Plus Manager at the queues that have been created. And here we go. Here's queue pos one. Okay, so I've used the SEMP API to actually provision this queue. But more than that, I was talking about the idea of abstracting away the event versus the topic. So if I look at the subscriptions that I've placed on that queue, what you'll be able to see is that while I've dealt with in my uh, GUI there, I've dealt with the events, what I've actually done here is created the subscriptions. And you can see that, as Magali said, because we had variable names in there, we're able to do wildcard subscriptions to pick up all of those events. And that's really it, the demo from, from start to finish. But I hope what you can kind of see there is that we're using Event Portal to raise the level of abstraction of what we're doing here to go from talking about topics and queues and individual broker artifacts up to the point at which we're talking about, I have an event and an application, and I need to create something on my event broker that enables an application to receive those events. So just to summarize then, what we've done is we've picked out events using the Event Portal API. We've narrowed down what we're doing from application domains to applications to the events that those applications deal with, selected those artifacts, decided what we're going to create, and then just use the SEMP API to actually create them, provision them on the broker. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time with us. Um, please, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you'd like me, like us to run this demo for you so you can see it in more detail, play around with it a bit, we'd be delighted to talk to you in more detail. So that's it. It's goodbye from me. Thank you. Merci. Goodbye.